Hi, refreshers, Nicole Lauren, I'm a fashion stylist. So today we're gonna to be working on decluttering an entire house and how to organize it when you have limited storage space. I know a lot of you are thinking you don't have enough space, you don't have enough cabinets. We're gonna learn how to effectively use every inch of your house. If you guys are new to my channel, I would love it if you hit that red subscribe button. Stay tuned to the very end, I'm gonna show you guys my top favorite organizing products from the Container Store. So when working on your whole house decluttering project, you have to figure out where to start. There's gonna be many places in your home that are going to be overwhelming. You're gonna say, oh my gosh, I'm attached to my clothes or maybe you're attached to your mug collection. Make sure that you guys start in the zone that you are the least attached to and then work from there. We're gonna take all the stuff out of each zone that we're working on and it's super important to make sure that you don't go in all of the zones at once. Focus on one area, declutter and organize it. Focus on the other area, declutter and organize it and just go from there. So we decided to start in the kitchen. That's where there was the least emotional attachments. So that's where you guys wanna start and whatever zone you're working in, pull everything out. Yes, everything. I know some of you might get overwhelmed by that, but the process works every single time because you need to see everything you have. You need to do an inventory. It helps you in the decluttering process and then it helps you see your zone that you can actually organize when you have a blank canvas to work with. As you can see behind me, it does not have to be neat and perfect. We just have general categories behind me. So we have all of our plates and cups. We have our food, we have our cookbooks, and behind me we have the forks and knives. So we're gonna able to now go through and declutter these items, and then we're just gonna simply look at what products we have, what space we can work with, and figure out how to organize it. Before you start decluttering, make sure you have two bags. This is the brand Husky that I use all the time. They are so durable, I can pile them to the tippy top and they won't break. One is for trash, one is for donation, and then have a basket or a box that's gonna be for items that don't belong in this zone that go somewhere else in the house. So I usually suggest to just take a laundry basket out, put everything in there. If you have a toy that doesn't belong in the kitchen, put it in that basket so you don't have to deal with it now. We wanna make sure we stay focused on decluttering and organizing this task. We don't wanna worry about donations, where they're gonna go, or where other items from the house are gonna go. Just focus on the zone that you're in. Decluttering tip for the kitchen. You guys are gonna to wanna to see what's actively used or deeply cherished when it comes to all of your cups, your mugs. Obviously with the food, we're not gonna deeply cherish our food, right? Most of us aren't. So you're just gonna wanna figure out what is expired. Throw the expired goods away. Chances are you have a lot that's been hiding in the back corners. So throw those away, expired foods, so you're only left with the food that you need to store. And then just make fast decisions. Don't overthink it. I tell my clients, if you're looking at your mug and you're not sure if you wanna get rid of it, is it actively used or deeply cherished? Yes or no? It's that simple, just make a fast decision. Also when decluttering your pantry and your client is the best ever and buys you gluten-free Oreos, I'm gonna eat all of them. So these are going home with me, they are not getting donated. Okay, so as you can see down here, we have a much smaller pile of products. We have decluttered quickly, we made those fast decisions. And now that we have everything emptied, we are just wiping everything out. Don't focus on cleaning too much. So it's not a time to get all your cleaning products out and spend 35 minutes cleaning. But everything's out, just do a quick wipe you can clean up all the extra little spillage or crumbs that are in the drawers and then we're gonna put everything back in all organized. While you're doing your sorting, another little decluttering tip is to make sure like items go with like items. So I'm actually in her utensil drawer and she's got a few different candle items and I remember seeing candles in another zone. So just make sure you put like items with like items. That's how we wanna store them. That's how they're gonna stay organized and how you're actually gonna remember where stuff goes. And it's gonna be a lot easier to keep up with the organization. So after you've done a deep declutter in the zone you're working on, we're in the kitchen, we've already decluttered it. We're figuring out where everything is gonna go. You wanna look at all of your spaces and figure out what's gonna make the most sense. If you have those hard to reach cabinets and usually the top cabinets in the kitchen, make sure you put items that are not used as regularly. So if you have that fine china that you're not ready to let go of, or maybe it's stuff that you only crack out when you're entertaining or having a party, put those in the higher places up here and make sure the actively used stuff is here. Don't be afraid to move stuff around. So if you took your glasses out of this cabinet, 
don't be afraid to put them somewhere else where it makes sense. When you come across certain items, like my client just said this is for camping, and I said, when are you going camping? She's never been camping. There's no camping trip on the calendar, but her family gave her this, and she feels like she needs to keep it just in case she goes camping. In those situations, I'm gonna tell you to let it go, donate those items, because if you do decide to go camping, you can just buy some cheap items instead of using the space that you need your regular items for. So when you have a small kitchen space to organize with, so if you don't have a lot of shelves, if you don't have a lot of cabinets, in this case, we don't have a standalone pantry. So the food's going back in these cabinets. There's a lot of products that I like to use. I love to use Lazy Susans. These can actually go in cabinets and especially in cabinets like this, it's kind of like dead zone space. We can have things like canned food, spices, and then we also have this one that's a double tier. And then these are really great too to stack because a lot of times if you don't have a lot of storage space, you're gonna to need to make more by standing things on top of each other. And then canisters like this are gonna be great to empty stuff out of the boxes into your cabinet so you can use your space. now has a zone and we were able to put her food in these bins and give her a pantry in her cabinets. So now we're getting ready to label and I always tell all of my clients to make sure you just generally label stuff. So you don't want to have to be every time you get new pretzels and crackers and all these different items, you don't want to have to be erasing these every time. So I do it pretty general, like I do a pasta and rice, I do a condiments one, dog treats, and then for the snacks, I literally just put snacks on the label. These chalk labels are great. I'll drop these below. And I actually just, she bought this brand of a chalk pen. I don't think I'm ever gonna buy any other brand. This is Sharpie. This runs so much smoother than all the other kinds that I've tried. And a little hint is these are wet erase. So if you go, if you mess up and you go to just erase this, it's not gonna come off. You're gonna want a wet a paper towel, wet a regular towel, and then just dry it and you can actually reuse these. So once we got to organizing, the process was even simpler because we already did a deep declutter, everything was already categorized, and then you wanna look at the spaces that you have and see what makes the most sense. So this client actually had her bowls and stuff over here before, and her food was in the other area. This makes so much more sense. We were able to label them, put them in bins, so this is like kind of a standalone pantry. It's off to the side, so then she has the rest of the kitchen to work with. These cabinets are always a dead zone for space because stuff gets lost. So we were able to move these shelves, put her double stacked turny thing, I don't know what this thing is called, uh, Lazy Susan for her spices here. And then we put another one here for all of the oils and then we've got refills on the side. And then this just made so much more sense to put her plates, her cups, and on the top is some bowls that she doesn't use a lot. So the actively used stuff is at the bottom and then the ones that aren't used as much are on the top. If you have these really tall spaces that you don't use a lot, you wanna make sure you use this for stuff that's not on the daily. So this is all of her cookbooks and her entertaining stuff. And then we were actually able to move her mugs in this area and give her a little coffee and tea area. That's smaller items, they make sense down there. And then the same with these guys here, we were able to put all of her utensils in here and then have storage for all of the other ones on the side. And then we have our pots and pans. And then down here we have our mixing bowls. So always think about where you're gonna use stuff, how often you use it when you think about where to organize it. Okay, we're making our way into the other spaces in the house. So we've tackled the kitchen, we decluttered, we organized. Now I suggest to move on to any closets, hall closets, bedroom closets. Why do we start there? Because all the rest of the stuff that's all throughout your house that you're gonna need stored, you're gonna need a place to put it. So she's got this awesome storage closet here with some shelves. So same process as the kitchen. We're gonna take all this out, see what we're keeping, and then we're gonna see what we're putting it back in. And then over here, we have this cabinet, which actually has a little bit of Christmas stuff and kind of some random stuff in there. So we are gonna take both of those out together, and then we're gonna dive in underneath the kitchen sink. Bathroom sink, just kidding, we just did the kitchen. And then we're gonna go into the closet. So same process, take everything out to see what's gonna go back in and then we're gonna find our products and then organize it. Number one tip I have when doing the closets is if you have more than one closet in your home, like hall closet, linen closet, do all of the decluttering for those together. Because chances are you're gonna have some that are like items and we wanna make sure that we make those closets designated areas. So we're gonna put all the towels and linens in one. We're gonna put all the other stuff in another. So it's a good way to get all the same category so you can organize it more efficiently. So 
we pulled everything out of both closets. As you can see, we have our categories back here. Super general, super sloppy, just toss like items with like items. And I'm actually going to go ahead and declutter underneath the bathroom sink because I wanna see if we need to store any of these items in the hall closet because it's right next to this door and there's two of them. So if you have items that you think might need to be stored in those closets, go ahead and pull those items out. So I'm gonna call the client over. We're gonna declutter these items, see what's actively used, deeply cherished, throw away what's expired. And then we're gonna get our products, plug them in and see how we're gonna organize. Bathroom tip that I'm gonna give you guys is take everything off of the counters. A lot of times everything looks super cluttered because we have stuff so right here. She has a makeup stand. It doesn't even fit in this space and she's got tons of stuff underneath. So we're gonna actually remove this stuff and make sure we have room under here. So think about the spaces that you need to organize when you go about decluttering because you've got to let your spaces define your stuff, not the other way around. We have this closet clear behind us. We got these super cute liners here. These have pineapples. So we are cutting these to line the shelves and then we're gonna put all this stuff back in. I do recommend sometimes getting liners. Um, it just makes it a little easier to clean and sometimes it actually keeps things in place. They don't slide as often. So we have decluttered all of these spaces down here and an organizing tip for this kind of stuff is think about just like in the kitchen, what stuff do you guys use more of? You wanna put the stuff that you use on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a little lower, a little more accessible than the stuff that you use a few times a year. Those things can go on the top shelf. So in her case, we have some blankets, we have some back stock, we have the stuff in the bathroom. So it's just gonna make more sense to make sure we have a home for all the back stock that was kind of split between underneath the bathroom sink and both closets into one. You guys, it is coming out so good. I'm gonna show you underneath the bathroom sink because it has come out amazing, but I wanted to point this tip out. So when you're organizing and you're figuring out what is gonna go back into your spaces, make sure your categories define where they go. So what I mean by that is have your stuff that's daily. I use this every day, it's actively used, that has to go underneath my bathroom sink. Then I have my refills. I'm gonna need stuff like my extra soaps, my extra hair products close by to the bathroom. We have a bunch of categories out there that are cleaning products, blankets, Christmas stuff, that's not stuff that needs to go in this area. So if we run out of room, those are the first to go somewhere else. I'm about to show you how good these came out. So look at her bathroom transformation. The products we got came out so good. This is all stuff that she uses all the time. So this used to be on top of the counter. We organized this and we actually put this piece on top of a different drawer. We have our super cute label. Shout out to my girls at the Home Edit with the Container Store for these amazing labels. They go great on clear jars and containers. So we have got extra makeup down there. We have lip care, face care, and we've got some hair products in the back. And then we were actually able to get these here. So these labels are amazing. Body care is all in here. We have eye care and her beautiful lashes stored in there. Then we've got our daily stuff and then we also have our hair care. This closet is literally right next to the bathroom. So we've got her sheets and pillowcases, her towels with some room that she's got stuff in the laundry. And then we have our labels here for our bath hand towels and face cloths. And then down here, we had some fun with the labels. Uh, these are actually chalk labels from the container store that I'll link below, but we are able to fit both of these clear containers in here. This one's, it's personal, so it's got all the personal products in there. This one, I smell good. This has got all of the soaps, the antibacterial, the candles. We have the wash me that's got some other towels and some makeup remover wipes. I nailed it. This one's got eye, eye products in there and then the nails. And then we've got some sweet and salty. So you got your lotions, your body butters, and your body salts for the bathtub. And then your roof is for the doggies. She's got a lot of dog stuff in here. So we were able to put it all in one. She buys all of her paper goods in back stock. So we wanted to make sure that when she stocks up from Sam's Club or Costco, wherever she's going, she has enough room. So we left some room to grow down there for paper towels. And then we've got all of our toilet paper in the cute bag. This is the other whole closet that's here. We use this more for back stock. So we've got back stock products, cleaning products and utility. And then we left the bottom extra. So when we run into things in the garage that we need extra storage for, we have the room. Don't be afraid of empty spaces too. This project is going so good. We're doing an entire house declutter and organize and my client is actually decluttering her jewelry. We're gonna empty all of her jewelry and put it in a super cute jewelry stand she has. She's pretty minimal. As you can see, these are the clothes she has behind me and then she's got some shoes down there and some random stuff up here. Everything is gonna come out of this space. We are gonna categorize it and we're gonna see what's gonna go back in. Stay tuned, you're gonna hear from my client soon. She's gonna share her secrets on how she became a minimalist and how she 
loves to keep it up and how it's affected her life. Okay, so we, she actually had another closet in the other room that was filled with clothes. So make sure when you're decluttering your space, like your closet, that if you have any other clothes, coat clothes, coat closet, anything, you put it all together so then we can do our categorizing and assess what we're getting rid of. She does have a lot of stuff on this bed that is stuff she wants to fit into. So my tip about that is to have some kind of bin that you store those items in if you absolutely have to keep them. Otherwise, it's time to let them go. When you lose weight, when we feel gray in our skin, we are gonna wanna buy new things anyway. So I always say own the body that you have now, respect the clothes that you fit into, and then if you have a mass amount of clothes that you are hoping to grow into someday, it's time to take a peek at those and evaluate and either keep a small bin of those products or just get rid of them and treat yourself when you get to your goal weight with new clothes. We are gonna finish taking all the clothes out of here, categorize, and get to decluttering. So we are busy doing our decluttering, rehanging, organizing our closet. Once you figure out the keepers, then we wanna make sure that we hang them on the velvet hangers that I'll drop the link below. And then I always want you to ask yourself, like I just asked my clients, is there anything else hiding anywhere? So I asked her if there's any other clothes hiding anywhere. And we have a suitcase full of clothes that she doesn't even really know what's in there. So just make sure that you do a quick sweep of everything in the house and make sure you have a true assessment of the inventory you have. So make sure you are dealing with all of your clothes. She had clothes in another closet, clothes in here, clothes in the drawers, and clothes in a suitcase. So we wanted to make sure we go through everything to see what we're gonna keep, and then we're just gonna hang everything and put everything back in the spaces. We are back for day two in our whole house declutter and organizing project. Yesterday, we decluttered the closet in the master bedroom. We were able to donate an entire bag of goodies and she said she had nothing to get rid of. So whenever you're thinking that you already decluttered your stuff, make sure you take it all out because you'll be surprised how much more you can get rid of and free up your space. So number one tip I'm gonna give you when it comes to organizing your closet and putting things back is figure out how you want it organized. First of all, I'm gonna tell you to color code it and I'm gonna show you a tip in a minute to keep it color coded, but see if you want it all one color of the rainbow, all styles blended together, or if you want your tank tops, your shirts, your long sleeves, your jackets, and then color coded within. I recommend to subcategorize them and color code them. So let's put it all back in the closet so you guys can see the finished results. Okay, we finished with the master closet. I'm gonna open this and show you how it is. And I'm also gonna give you some tips on how we got here and how you can create your own space like this. So first I wanna chat with you guys about shoes. So my client had a lot of shoes. We were able to declutter some of them but I wanted to make sure that the ones that she doesn't actively use a lot, like all of these fun heel colors when she has special events, were out of the closet. She doesn't have too big of a closet. This is actually under the bed storage. If it's right under the bed, I'll link that below. And then we actually also had some extra storage space on the top that I knew we weren't gonna use. So this is a great opportunity for you guys to showcase your super cute sparkly heels. And if you guys own a lot of running shoes or if you're passionate about a certain kind of shoe, put those on the top for extra storage and it just kind of gives a little showcase in your closet. Her other shoes are actually in this little cubby here and they all fit perfect. This extra shelf was actually in her closet and it was filled with a bunch of clutter. So we actually don't need this in the closet. So we're actually gonna move this into the garage for extra storage. Don't be afraid to do that. And let's chat about her clothes. So she actually wanted these all mixed in. So this client, sometimes we do categories and we'll do like your tank tops and your shirts and your short sleeve shirts and your dresses. She wanted all of her dressy tops and cardigans and everything to go together. So we actually color coded those within this space. The only thing my OCD-ness is I'm realizing her hangers have gold and silver, but I'll get over it. Um, be cautious of that because whenever you order hangers, uh, sometimes there'll be silver, black, rose gold hooks. She already had these and she wanted to use what she had. But this is her organized clothing wall. And then 
On this side, we put more of her fancy dresses, all of her beach komodos that have all the patterns, which is sometimes hard to color code, but we did the best we could over here. And then we have all of her other formal dresses. And then over here, we've got her skirts and pants color coded. And then up here, we had bought these. I'll drop the links for, below for these items here. But on the top, we've got bathing suits. And then over here, we've got some lingerie and shapewear. And then over here, we've got some super cute clutches, but these actually match the under the shoe organizer. She had such a minimal collection of stuff. We were able to store these minimally in her closet and they look super cute in the process. So one of my tips I wanna go over with you guys on how we created this closet space is we took everything out and we categorized it. And then I realized she had a lot of shoe organizers and she had a lot of shoes, but not all of them were actively used. So that's when I made sure we had an under the store, under the bed storage, put those shoes that you don't wear a lot someplace else if you have the room for it. And then I also realized she had a lot of bags. So see what kind of item besides your clothes you have the most of and make sure you have some kind of storage item for those. So in her case, she had a lot of bags and clutches and she had a lot of shoes. So underneath the bed went the shoes, we displayed some and then we were able to fit the ones worn regularly in the shoe organizer. And then the bags are all gonna be in the box on the top and then see what you have for drawers. So we actually organized her drawers. We had the underwear, we had bras, we had all of the casual wear usually I would suggest to put in your drawers, um, like your shorts and your PJs and your tank tops and your t-shirts and we filled those drawers and then I realized okay those are all full we actively use those we need to touch those a lot what is something that's in these drawers that we can pull out that we don't use a lot and that's where we decided the bathing suits and the shapewear would go in here so you want to make sure you put the stuff in the bins that you have a lot of and that you might not need to touch daily because you might want not want to go in the bin open it every single day those items you want to make sure those are handy hanging or in the drawers so as you can see, I have to comment on her super cute antique drawer here too. It's reminding me of my grandmother's house. But as you can see here, these were kind of narrow drawers. So we fanned the items in here, but we made sure we used items, we stored items in here that are actively used. So she uses her jeans more than she uses her shapewear, more than she uses her bathing suits that are up there. So that's where we can kind of decide where you want to designate what goes in your drawers and what goes in your closet. When it comes to your bags, I always say to pick the biggest bag and then you're gonna keep all of the other bags within this one. I do ask the question, is this a bag that you're gonna need all the time daily? Cause you're not gonna wanna empty all these bags out of here if you use this bag actively. This is actually for travel, so we're good there. She only uses this occasionally, so this can be a home for all those other bags that she has all over the closet in one organized space. Another tip I love to tell my clients to do is find your suitcases and make sure you have all of your travel stuff within it. So this bag here is actually her carry-on. We found these randomly in the other room. These are for traveling, traveling jewelry case, traveling neck pillow. So this is a great idea to maximize your storage space and make sure all of your stuff is in one spot. Jewelry is another item that we find everywhere in closets, in bathrooms. Make sure you get yourself a jewelry stand or something to hang on the wall to make sure you're not cluttering your counter spaces. And you can also use one like this for your sunglasses and any other items that you need to organize. So a lot of us are transitioning into working from home these days and you wanna make sure that your office space is a home for inspiration, motivation, and clutter-free. So we're gonna dive into here and I'm gonna go over some simple tips to decluttering and organizing your home office. So after emptying all of the cabinets and gathering all the paperwork from all around here, we've gathered that there's important papers and business documents. I'm going to show you where to put those in your office. You guys have a desk that has a filing system in here like these. We're going to actually buy the folders and those papers are going to actually be stored right in here. One for important documents and the other is going to be for her business. If you don't have the storage in your desk, then I recommend filing, buying some kind of filing. <laughs> buying some kind of filing cabinet or system for your office space. So we were able to declutter this closet. Now this closet is actually in her office. So I asked my client, what do you want this space to be? What do you need this storage space for? She doesn't have any more clothes. We already used her closet space in the other room and she actually does not have any business office stuff in here. So we actually are going to declutter the garage and she owns a bartending service. So we're gonna actually maximize this space and put her goodies in this closet. Don't be afraid to use your closet spaces for something else that you need storage space for. As you can see, we've got a pretty big size closet. It's completely empty. So we're gonna go ahead to the garage and see what we can find. 
We have saved the garage for last. Usually I suggest to do the garage first because you can clear out some space for what's gonna de be decluttered inside to go out here, but there was a lot of overwhelming emotions out here, so we saved this for last. Make sure you guys do that for yourself and wherever you have the most emotional attachments or wherever you feel the most overwhelmed, save those for last. So as you can see, she's got lots of stuff out here. So this is all of the holiday stuff. She actually is a traveling bartender. So this is all of her equipment that she uses that when she goes to work. And then we have the extra bar and all of the bar equipment. And then that's why we have all these coolers and bins. So we're gonna see if we can declutter a little bit, see if we can maximize the space out here and then also use that space she has in that closet. And then she's also got some storage space here. So this is gonna be more utility. And then her laundry stuff is out in the garage as well. So we're gonna make sure that we put our laundry stuff in here organized. We do have some baskets and bins that we're gonna use. So we're gonna get started with decluttering the garage. Okay, it's decluttering time. We are tackling the garage. First step when tackling any space is we're gonna categorize. So take everything out, see what's going back in. And we have holiday stuff, we have her work stuff, so we do have another room that we might transition these items to, but we're just gonna literally take everything out and categorize. So a lot of times when doing the garage, you run into overwhelming feelings and emotions because you realize how much stuff is actually out here. So we've already run into medical supplies, we've run into some stuff that goes in the kitchen, we've run into our work stuff, holiday stuff. Don't be overwhelmed with all the mass amount of stuff. That's what your garage is for, but just make sure you have different categories, labeled in bins, and don't be afraid to move some stuff inside and move some stuff outside. So garages are extra storage, but just make sure they're organized and they're maximized to the best. Okay, so we had major categories, like all of our bartending stuff was in one area. Then you wanna go through a little deeper. So like this is her mixers. Then we have display products over here. Then we have all of our paper goods and cups and our serveware. So once you have your big categories, go ahead and do smaller categories because these are gonna go in your bins and your baskets to be labeled. So we're working through our categories and like I said, she's a traveling bartender. So she is going to help us organize these. Usually we put everything in categories like all of the blenders and utility stuff would go in one. All of the decor would go in another. All the cups go in another. But we want to make this easy so she can grab and go. So she's going to make bins. So all you need to do is make sure you stage your products. So we've got empty bins ready to be filled. And then over here, we also have these baskets here that are going to be stored with labels all ready to go. So after you have your categories and you're ready to organize, always stage your products and then literally just fill them up and that's how you can store them. Okay, we decluttered and organized in bins all of her work bartending stuff, so now it's time to move on to Christmas and holidays. Don't try to overwhelm yourself by tackling everything at once. Christmas is my favorite time of year. I'm ready to start playing Christmas carols. So we are doing a declutter of the Christmas stuff. Just leave those bins aside. Organize them in the bin, put them to the side. You don't wanna do a full garage organization until all of your areas are decluttered and then the bins are organized and then you can set up your bins in the shelves and then label them. Now you can see everything is in bins, ready to be organized. We're gonna grab some labels tonight and then put them on the shelf, so don't worry about the organization. We're gonna organize it after we declutter all spaces in the garage. So sometimes when you organize the entire house and the garage, you have some odds and ends. So we have leftover candles that we don't have a place for. We had leftover cups that we had no place for. So if you have extra bins, go ahead and use those because you have the storage space. This is gonna be her extra selection of cups. We had candles underneath the bathroom, candles underneath the kitchen, candles on top of the hutch. So we're gonna actually make a candle basket. So if you have adds and ends, just make sure that you find a home. Don't be overwhelmed because you're gonna have some odds and ends left over. Just find spaces or then 
Like we have some random cleaning stuff somewhere. We're gonna make sure those go underneath the sink. So find a home for all the left. Okay, so everything is in a box in the garage and next up is to crack out those labels before you put everything on the shelf. This actually reminds you what you have on the ground, what needs to be stored. We actually got these chalk labels. I love using these in the garage. I will drop the link below and we're gonna put everything on the shelf. So little technical difficulties over here. We could not fit the bins that we wanted on the shelf. So we needed to take the shelves apart. We are gonna go ahead and move these shelves so we can fit them. And then we're gonna put the bins where they go. organize all of her bar stuff on must-have items that she uses all the time, specialty items so she can just take these bins and put them in the car, and then we have all of our holiday stuff. She even said, wow, I think I could do a second declutter, because once you see how much of stuff you actually have and where it is, you realize you don't need as much. We were able to use this office closet for extra bar stuff that goes all the way back. And then more are on the way, storing all of her bar, cups, and accessories. These were the cabinets in the garage. We simply got some clear bins from the container store and labels so she can find everything when This she... open shelving is perfect for her personal stuff, the cups that she uses at home, and then all of the laundry. Here we put small things she used for her bar business for holidays, so they're all labeled and organized. We finished early with this whole house declutter and organized project, so we are diving into the spaces that everyone wants to avoid and it's always papers. So we had bins in here filled with random papers, random stuff. We got some cute shades. These are really cute actually. Let's put these on. We've got some cute shades. We have some pens. We have some pencils. We have some paper. So now number one tip when uh, organizing all of your papers is actually to make a command and filing system. So she's already got in her desk here all of these files. We went out yesterday and bought the folders to be filed. And then she's got that cute big wall in the back here. And I told her to get some command center things from Hobby Lobby, Container Store, Amazon. I'll drop some of my favorite products in the links below. But find yourself a calendar, chalkboard, whiteboard, whatever you like, but find an organizing system for the wall. So sometimes those uh, filing cabinets, not cabinet, filing folder for the wall, it's got three slots. So you can do this needs to be filed, this needs to be mailed out, and this is incoming. So then you have a system to stay in place and in track, and you cannot have to deal with all this paper mess all the time. Easiest way to tackle all these papers is categorize them just like everything else. We're gonna make categories for business, we're gonna make categories for personal, we're gonna make category for randomness, and then file them in the systems that we This will save you so much time and aggravation. We have all of our piles labeled super general, and now we are ready to go file them. Don't feel like you gotta file them as you go. This is so much quicker to make your categories. And then so you're gonna wanna snag these from the container store, erasable hanging file folder label starting kit. So much better than those paper ones. You can erase the labels and they stay on more sturdy. We now have an organized drawer system. So all of your sticky notes when you were making your categories just transfer right into your little tabs. You can find everything. We've got one side for personal and the other for business. You guys, this house refresh came out amazing. We are so happy. I'm gonna give you a quick little tour to show you how amazing everything went. And then we're actually gonna hear a little tip from our client. She's gonna tell us how she loves being a minimal. Bathroom transformation went so good. We have all of her stuff organized underneath the bathroom sink. We got these super cute containers from the container store and these labels. And then close by was her closet. That was no function, no flow. Now everything has a place and a space. Everything is organized and labeled. Her master closet is worthy of all of these fancy shoes and clothes. We were able to display all of her sparkly heels on the top. Her clothes are below in color-coded order. And then down here, we have all of our extra baskets and bins that are labeled. We did a refresh in all these spaces and cleaned everything up. Her kitchen was pretty limited on storage space. So as you can see, she had no pantry in here. So we switched the cabinets around and we put her pantry food in here. We just added some containers from the container store, some labels so she can find everything. And now everything has a space here 
it's only her that lives here, so this is enough room for all of her food. This had some random things around and we were actually able to declutter those items, use this as a vegetable holder. Over here, we put, all this was on the counter, so we used this Lazy Susan for organization here. Spices now have a place. We did have to do some wiggle work with these shelves and move those around, so don't be afraid to move those. And then we've got another Lazy Susan up here for the hot sauces. And then we've got some extra storage back there. And then this was actually where her food was living before. So this just made more sense. It's right by the stove for her plates and cups. And then we made sure on the very top, we put the items that she doesn't use as much. This china was in about three different spaces from around the house. So we were able to declutter this unit and actually store the china in here. Those of you that stayed till the very end, thank you for watching. And I'm gonna go over all of the products that were used in this project today. And they are literally my top favorite products from the container store. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you last, my ultimate favorite product for all spaces. But I'm just gonna go over a few that this client got. She was amazing. She had gift cards to the container store. What better gift to ask your family for? Um, these are amazing. These come in all different kind of colors. So they have a handle, they've got these holes. I know they come in black, they come in navy. I think they come in clear and then they come in the white. And I love that they have this bamboo lid. You can use them with or without the lid. So those are those baskets. And then we've got these here, which are great for your pantry and your kitchen. So these are, um, these have the pop lids. Some of them, I usually prefer to get the snap lids, but these work good as well. So these have different sizes. They come with the scoops. And I think these are dishwasher safe. Yeah, you can put these in the dishwasher and they're stackable. So those are awesome. I usually use Lazy Susans in pantries or sometimes in cabinets with hard to reach areas. And you can wipe these clean, you can stack products. Sometimes we'll put spices, canned foods. Sometimes if you have a smaller kitchen, we actually use these and these are really easy access. Uh, little bins, get bins of all different shapes and sizes, but these are good for sometimes underneath your bathroom sink or in the laundry room, depending on what size shelves you guys have. These are one of my all time favorite products. I never know, what does the tag say? I never know how to say this. It's like a woven, Pithian bin, like if any of you know how to say that, please drop it in the comments because I, I always say it wrong. But these are amazing, they have a handle. These fit perfect in closets, on shelves. You can use these anywhere. These even sometimes go underneath beds in um, on top of your laundry room on that rack. These are perfect for storage. These are really cool for underneath the bed or on top of closets. Uh, these are a storage case. So this actually has a zipper that you can take off here and these fit so many things in that. And then we also have this for your spices. So this is for the drawer. I actually had a client use this last week. I didn't use it before, but these are amazing. It actually lays flat and then it gives your product a chance to be displayed. So these are amazing. And then for those baskets and bins, they have all different kinds of labels. Sometimes I tell you guys to get those chalk labels. So they're like actual chalk material, chalkboard material, and then you write on it with a chalk pen. These here are bin label clips. So you can actually put a piece of paper on here. She chose to get the gold one. So those are really a pretty accent detail. Talking about gold detail, she also got these, which is probably my favorite thing she bought. I love that she's going with pineapple. Her home is decorated cute boho style. You know I'm all about that. But these are actually um, drawer liners. So you can cut these to fit any shape drawer that you have. And then um, I'm gonna show you my favorite product. So usually clients will either get clear or white. These are my all time favorite bin. I know in all of my videos and in my posts, you guys are like, where do you get these? Container store, Ikea or Amazon, I'll drop the links below. But I just love these because they're the perfect size. You can do your organizing like a vending machine like I talk about in some of my videos. They have handles and then the labels fit perfect here. She got a lot because I told her to get a lot. She's got a lot of spaces to organize. And I think that, uh, what is this? Oh, this is actually for your, you can put multi things in here. So bathroom, underneath the sink, you can put things like soaps and sponges. And in the kitchen, you can actually stand like your Ziploc baggies, your aluminum foil. So that's a great idea for these. And then just again, just different size bins, different size containers. This client decided to go with more of a clear look. Some people like white. Uh, some people like to mix it up depending on what room you're in. And oh, we got a smaller size of these containers. So these are good for sometimes in the bathroom. Um, even sometimes if you want to display these on the counter or some people put these like in their bathtub or their shower, it's a nice little caddy. These are the small size. The other size was the large. 
And then we have these, which are for underneath the, you can use these multi-purpose. You can use these underneath your sinks, or you can actually use these for shoes in the closet. So these have a lot of different purposes. So super excited the way this project came out, and we are gonna get to hear from my fabulous client. Her name is Danielle. I'm so happy that we met. We have so much in common. She loves boho decor, and if you guys follow me, you know that I am a boho girl. This is Danielle. She actually has her own business. Tell us a little bit about your business. Yes, I am the owner of Miss Mixology, and we are an on-traveling location services for all your bartending needs. So exciting. So I'm going to be hosting some parties, and she's definitely going to be behind the bar. Oh, yeah. And tell our audience, like, why are you a minimalist, and how does it make you feel to be minimalist? Yes, um, I'm a minimalist because it, I need to be organized. Um, I like to stay on top of you know things that I have planned for my business, and staying mm -hmm. organized keeps me there. So. Yep. And does it make you feel happy and refreshed? Absolutely, yes. We're and no anxiety. No anxiety. <laughs> yes. When you guys have all your stuff laying around, it's overwhelming. You get anxious. You get stressed. She's gonna enjoy her new space her new garage that has all of her bartending equipment in it, and she is gonna be ready to reopen to mix all you guys' drinks. Thank yes. you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this entire house declutter and organize session and that you guys learned a lot of stuff to go do your own spaces in your own home. You guys are worthy of those refreshes and I hope that you guys know that you can do them yourself. If you guys were new to my channel, I would love it if you hit that red subscribe button. Don't forget to ring that bell so you guys never miss a beat or a basket or an entire house declutter and organize session and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.